Okay, good day. This is Jim Pytel from Columbia Gorge Community College's Renewable Energy Technology Program. This is Digital One EET 121. Today we're going to discuss the AND gate, which is one of our basic logic functions. Okay, the AND gate, the symbol that we've been using here, is this, whereby two inputs come in. We get a single output, and this is the symbol that we have been using. But be aware there are other symbols. So this is a box symbol. Um, that means this guy right there. So this is the most common one, um, but be aware that this one does exist. Okay, so what is, uh, how does an AND gate work? Its output is high when A and B are simultaneously high. All other conditions, it's low. So let's draw our truth table for this. A, B, X, or by all possible combinations of A and B, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. And again, remember that the kind of the, the regular old English expression of how an AND gate works, it is high when both inputs are high. It is low in other other circumstances. So when are they both high? Right there. That's the one and only time that it will produce an output of high. So all the other ones are zero. So basically, the basic purpose of an AND gate is to determine when certain conditions are simultaneously true. So A and B, they come in, they have to both be simultaneously true for an X to give you an output of high. Okay. So let's talk about some pulsed operation of these things here. Given this the AND gate right here and these signals, A and B, with these particular shapes, what can we expect the output X to look like? So let's go ahead and draw our input. Even though X would appear over here, what we're going to do is we're just going to wrap it around to show it on the same timing diagram. Say so X is going to look like this. Given that, our first conditions from time 0 to 1, we've got an A high and a B low. Looks like A high, B low, it's going to be a low. Now given time 1 to 2, again we're just kind of following these things down from our timing, timing diagrams. 0 and 0, it's also a 0. Now from time 2 to 3, it looks like A and B are high, so we get a high output there. And now A is back to low from time period 3 to 4, giving us a low signal on our output. So the pulsed output of X, given the pulsed inputs of A and B, it looks like it's high only between periods two and three, okay? Um, all you gotta do is just get that brief window of, um, of where they're both simultaneously high. So if I drew these, uh, these signals right here, we could expect our output to look like this. It's low, at z uh, low on A, starts off low. B is also low, so we're there. Now A goes high, but B is still low. Now we get a brief window of time right here where both B and A are high. So our output becomes high. And then it goes back to zero. They're both at zero. Now B goes up to one. A is still at zero, so it's zero. Now there's no other times when they're simultaneously high. So you get here. Basically, it's just a brief window, a brief blip in time when X becomes a high signal. Okay, Where is it simultaneously high? Right here. Both conditions A and B are simultaneously true during this brief window of time. That's kind of the purpose of an AND gate. So let's go ahead and talk about the Boolean expression of AND gates. Actually, before we do that, I need to let you guys know that um, example 3-3 in the book, there's a wrong answer for the related problem. Um, I think the waveform, um, I can't remember what it was, but uh, if you, if you get a different answer for example 3-3, um, B 
be aware that the answer in the back of the book, the related problem is wrong. Um, while we're on the subject, let's actually just go ahead and uh, talk about some of these things that the book is doing here uh, for the example problems. I want to do one real quick for you. Let's try this one right here. This one is easy enough to figure out. Uh, given A and B having waveforms like this, where this is signal A and this is B, what we can do is just, get, again, using the techniques we had before, what is the output X? It's going to look like this, which is simple enough. It's the only times that A and B are simultaneously high. But what the book asks you, which I think is a pretty cool question, given that signal A is inverted, what is the, uh, you basically just invert signal A, what is the output X? So let's go ahead and draw what not A would look like. And there it is, it's the inverted signal of A. When, it, when A is low, not A is high. When A is high, not A is low, and vice versa. So now, given not A and B, what does signal X look like? And there you have it, slightly different waveform than when we had before, because not A is and B are simultaneously high only during these windows of time. Okay, so I think those are pretty cool questions. Given a signal such and such, and another signal such and such, and then you've inverted one of them, what is the output? Okay, let's go back into our Boolean algebra expression of an AND. Okay, this is the way to think of it. Boolean AND is described as Boolean multiplication. So A and B equals X can also be written as A and B equals X. That right there is Boolean multiplication. Boolean multiplication follows the same basic rules governing mul binary multiplication, whereby a 0 times a 0 is a 0. A 0 times a 1 is a 1. 1 times a 0 is a 0. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> Going too fast here. I'm sorry. Go back to that. Let's do the whole thing again here. Okay. Basic rules of multiplication. 0 times a 0 is 0. 0 times a 1 is a 0. 1 times a 0 is a 0. 1 times a 1 is a 1. So think of this as 0 and 0 is 0. 0 and 1 is 0. 1 and 0 is 0. 1 and 1 is 1, which looks surprisingly similar to our truth table. Now what's cool about this is you can actually extend our single, or excuse me, our double input ands to cases where there's three inputs. All three inputs need to be simultaneously true for X to be true also. 